Bag fuel, baby. Woo! Bag fuel. Super ecstatic. We're gonna do a general introduction. Not the excessive introduction. Heineken is here. ESSO, if you want to see sounds of fishing. You got a hairline too, man. <laughs> Not to say he was bald. I, I, don't, I don't have a hairline, so I'm envious, Pap. It with the head on. You talking shit with a head on. Yeah, of course. That's what Brooklyn <laughs> niggas do. Speaking of it. talking shit. Wait, wait, hold on. We got Pap Chanel. Oh, yes, Miss Papiana, Pap Chanel. Yeah, there you go. Two things they say about Pap Chanel. You got bars and you hate broke niggas. Big facts. I think every queen does. I think that's that's what every queen hates, a broke nigga. Because every song that you got pumping right now, you shit on broke niggas immediately within the first three bars. Hey, I had a great dad, so you know what I'm saying? He oh. set the standard. So when I got out here in this relationship, bro, I, I need something. You know what I'm saying? You got to show me better than that from what I've seen in this, as a child. As a woman who's in the industry, you, you know, you're leveling up. You are you have access to things that the normal human doesn't have. What's the minimum base a man has to make to engage with Pap Chanel? 150 is okay. Can you date a bus driver? A bus driver that owns the bus driver. Oh, it's place. over. <laughs> he got a, like, he, he, he drive the buses, but he own it too. You know what I'm saying? He's just not driving the bus. Uh, yo, He's listen, not the employee. Yo, yo. <laughs> people don't ask people, how much money do you make? I think women just gauge it to be like, yo, is he buying me what I need? Do we go to places that I need to go? And does he complain about being broke? No, though. No. I feel like sometimes when a man has a certain type of job, occupation like mm -hmm. it's just like tells me something sometimes like it's some fire ass niggas that work at walmart over there doing what they got to do but sometimes i feel like a man gotta shoot for the stars himself if you're not shooting for the stars yourself why am i gonna feel like you're gonna shoot the stars for me baby mm. you know what i'm saying ambition yeah like i'm saying like damn like you fucking 36 working at walmart i mean i ain't not gonna do do what you gotta do feed the family but i'm just feel i just feel like Mm, mm, it's gonna what, something's gonna happen like this it's not gonna go mm, for real you what if he's saying? a manager at the super walmart Cause you know there's levels to this Walmart game, Pap. Yes, yeah, levels to the to the Walmart. Yo, Pap ain't fucking with nothing but Walmart. On <laughs> and then like, you I'm already like, know that it doesn't matter. You got to be the president. You got to own the Walmart for to be like, oh, he owned Walmart. He owned a couple of them. She ain't fucking with nothing with no. I feel Walmart like it's a mindset guy. thing. I feel like it's a mindset thing, man. Like. Tell me about your bars, though. Mm, I saw yes. the Cosmic Cab just now. Everybody that we speak to about you, cause we go to Atlanta a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm going on Thursday. They talk about you and your bars, and they and they have convinced me that you're not like the rest, that you're actually right in the bars. Big facts. What's up with that? It's sent me not on me. Like me making music is something that I grew. I grew up in a household with like five brothers, so like it was like a hip hop house. Like every time we, I turned around, it's a new artist they put me on: Tupac, Lil Wayne, Ti. I was on all the Dirty South music as a kid. So it just set a bar for me when it came to me, like when I came, when it came to me falling in love with music, I was like, I gotta go crazy. Five brothers and all I heard was some hood tales all my life. I'm gonna go crazy. So by the time I turned 16 and I was doing my freestyles and stuff, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the best at what I do and I'm gonna perfect my craft to the point where no bitch ain't touching it. Pretty and paid, yeah. <laughs> what, what, was the, what was the blueprint? Because you know, especially in the South, they always mm -hmm. give the Southern rappers are rap for not having bars, lyricism. And then with girls, nobody believes girls write their rhymes. Nobody believes a lot of girls have bars. And you crushing two of those stereotypes at the same time. Like, where does this motivation really come from aside from your brothers? Who, who are you watching? I was watching Nikki, Foxy Brown, Eve. Those were like the main top three that gave mm. me inspiration. They talked to my inner queen and I just like how they just came off when it came to how they presented their music. So I was like, shit, like, you know, Foxy didn't play no motherfucking games. Like, Foxy got them pop your ass in the damn shit you play with her by her damn music. So I was like, you know what? I gotta show the hunger in my music just based off of those three females that solidified me and how I'm gonna present myself. Because even to this day, if I want to hear some female rap, I would still turn on Nicki, Foxy, and Eve, and it just makes me want to go make a freestyle right after that. Yo, you want to turn on Kim? Yeah, I turn on Kim, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I fell in love with Nicki Minaj when I was six years old. When I was, I was just like, oh my God, I just love her. She just kept me intrigued. She kept me intrigued, even though Nicki and Little Kim, they, they both, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, ran, they ran the shit, like they ran the shit. But Nicki Minaj, I just loved the fuck out of her because I just loved the pink wigs, the Barbie. I had all the fucking Barbies. So I was like, oh, she, this is a female rapper with the Barbies and she's talking that shit. So I was like, you know what? 
Was it was it that monster verse that did it for you? It wasn't a monster verse. It was playtime is over. I'll be me up Scotty's mixtape. I was like, sure. Six years old. Six years old. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I feel old as hell. <laughs> and he's young. Yeah. <laughs> did you take time off for a little while? Cause I heard you say that you you back making your 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 rounds again. Did you pause for a second? Well, all that shit, I was making a lot of commercial songs. I got featured on P Valley, Madden, um, Woke. It was a lot of TV shows and a lot of different programs and stuff that was rocking with my music and stuff. So I was just stacking up my catalog and getting ready for my project that's dropping this year, you know? So you made a lot of era. money off them sync fees? And, and Hell yeah. Way. Shout out to Madden, P Valley, Woke, <laughs> all y'all. This is why she kills pay. broke niggas. <laughs> You know Effortlessly. And you know what though? I'm gonna say this though. I'm gonna say this too. Go for when it. it comes down to me and my preference in a man, I'm not gonna lie. The reason why I said I can't fuck with no broke nigga because I done went through trial and error with a broke nigga. What what was what's it like going through this trial and error? Every time I done fucking tried to talk to a dude that's trying to figure himself out or he ain't got his stuff together hundred percent, it brought me down. Like I'm trying to figure this shit out with you. Like we don't. We, it's two different mindsets. You know what I'm saying? And I would I would say this truthfully. Like mm. me growing up with five brothers, I know it's some dudes out there that just it's times where they just going through stuff. They like in this bad mm -hmm. spot, and that's what I'm saying. It's a mindset thing. You gotta fucking want to get yourself out of that. Like, dude, you gonna be fucking 36 years, old, 80 years old working at Walmart? What you gonna do? What did Walmart do to you, Pap? <laughs> That's the <laughs> lifeline of the South. I live in the South. So did he have? Did like, he, come on, Pat. I'm gonna just be honest. I don't even. I don't even like. I'm a, I don't even like. I hate walking in Walmart and I see like elderly people working. And I just hate it. Like I'm gonna be that. I'm gonna be the superwoman when I, when the when the bag is fulfilled. You know, I'm up there with Beyonce and shit. You know, on, on the goddamn floors like and you, shit. I'm gonna go to Walmart and I'm gonna make sure y'all don't have to touch a Walmart shit. I'm telling mm. you. So you y'all hear me talking shit about Walmart right now, but I'm gonna look out for y'all later on. Watch, okay? If you want to talk shit about what I said. <laughs> it sounds like you're trying to save the world. Though. I'm going to save the world. I'm going to save the world. The world's mm. going to be pretty and paid. Mm. <laughs> and y'all y'all man out there, y'all going to be paid and pimping. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, what's the post of Atlanta for a female rapper right now? Because it's a, I see a mm. lot of strippers out there rapping, and it's a lot of women out there that got some good songs mm. that's popping. What's the post right now? Because the New York post is like, yo, the Going women crazy. running it right now. Going you know crazy. I will most definitely agree. Up north is having they run right now. It's going crazy up north. Down south, I feel like right now, shout out to Mulatto. Yeah, Mulatto's going crazy. But right now, I feel like the female scenery of rap in right now in Atlanta, everybody's just trying to find their sound again since up north is just taking over. Y'all have like a whole new beat aesthetic. Like it's just way different. So like, Everybody's just trying to find their sound, and some people that are still pushing their sound. But I feel like when it comes to music, you gotta fucking find your longevity and find your niche in an area for you to last long. Cause it's, you know what I'm saying? Nicki Minaj forever switched it up. Of course, yeah. So I feel like right now, it's gonna circulate again. Up North is winning, it's the sound stuff is gonna hit again. Y'all know who that bitch gonna be. So you, cause <laughs> you're the, I've had a few people say that the Atlanta rap scene is trash. Not because of the music, but because of the environment, the violence, it, it doesn't feel like what it was before. Now, us being in New York and you talking about the, the surgence of all the women, mm -hmm. I didn't even look at it, all these women in New York is popping off. Do you feel like Atlanta's feeling that pressure of all these New York women or up North women cooking? I feel like the pressure is felt, but it's like a more inspiring thing at Got the you. same time. Because the fact that the females up north are winning right now, it's like, okay, I could do this shit too. So that's why I'm finna get myself in the bag and I'm finna figure out what the fuck I need to figure out. So down south, can, goddamn, we could build our catalog up and we can show Got these you. motherfuckers too. Y'all got it up there, we got it down here too as well. I love so, it. Yeah, it's just like, okay, let me goddamn put my head back in this book and be creative because it's it's time for a new sound for down south females as well. You know, we be just finna Hit a nigga in the head, like you said, you broke niggas ain't shit. I just time for something new. I commend your fearlessness, cause I don't know if you're gonna remember. I spoken to them. You had did our South by show, and I think you were 17 at the time. It was our scumbag season stage, and you was you with another young girl, and we just flipped it around to let the owners let you in. I'm like 17, all right, and she killed it in front of a bunch of grown men. And seeing you now, I didn't even identify how fearless you are. Like, where does that come from, though? The best way to be. Like, 
I got this type of attitude. It's like it's either now or never. Like mm. I'm finna give it my all right now, so I won't have to say later on. I wish I would have did that, or I wish I would have did that. And hey, and if it ever happens like that, it's a learning lesson. So the next time I'm gonna come extra, extra, extra harder. So I just always try to give my best. Soon as I get the opportunity, like I just like to give it all because every artist that I've I'm inspired by, I feel like they give their all. And I'm like, okay, I want to be that artist to a little girl like I was when I was six years old. Like when I was six years old, I was like, oh, I love her ambition. I love her her motivation and how she's just eager to goddamn show these people that she mm -hmm. is that bitch and I'm I'm here to stay. So I want to give people that same feeling when it how comes you, down to how, it. How does it feel to be Pop Chanel? It's amazing. Mm. It's always something new for Pap Chanel. I talk about Pap Chanel like like she's just an opposite person, like on some Hannah Montana shit. Like You are an opposite person because it is. you have your real name and you're with your family and you do what family shit do and they know you a certain way. Right. And then when you walk out of there, you're, you are Pap Chanel. Like when I'm with my, my family, I'm just Randy. They don't call me by my name. They like, you're Rand, 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 Rand. They don't even, it's hard for people that know me to even call me something that's not my original name. So you are yeah. too, you are two different people like I kind of get to be the same person I'm just a loud mouth regularly I, I just do my regular <laughs> shit you know what I'm yeah. saying but how does it feel to be you like it feels it feel great to be me I yeah, fucking love being me I got a lot of perks <laughs> niggas know me I make a lot of money I'm lit it feels great to be me but what does it feel, feel like to be you it's amazing I, I always know this girl has something amazing to come and yet it's, it's never like a limit to on like this bitch, like this bitch is crazy. Like, I kid you not, I be a fucking amazing myself sometimes. The things that I think of and how far I could just stretch my ideas with stuff. So I'm like, damn, like this is a this is dead ass another person. I'd be at the mom like, okay, Pap Chanel will wear this, Jada will wear this, Pap Chanel might wear this later on. She might wear this next year. This it's like I could dead ass stretch this whole idea of Pap Chanel. It's pretty and pay. It's dead as a brand. It's amazing to be Pap Chanel because people dead ass look up to this girl and I'm gonna keep giving it to him. Nah, I enjoy it. Like, how imaginative does your mind go? How, how far does it expand? How crazy do you get? I get real crazy because me coming from a small country town, I didn't have no I choice. You from, I think you're from Atlanta. No, I'm not from Atlanta. I'm from, my hometown is an hour and a half away from Atlanta, Milledgeville, Georgia. Millersville, Georgia. <laughs> Sound like the cows walk, walk on the Georgia. streets. Georgia. The cows be walking on the streets with the car. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I'm from Millersville, Georgia. Yeah, it's a small town. Yeah. So, like. I would have from the. Hey, where you live at now? You still live in Millersville? I'm still in Atlanta now. Oh, thank God you out of Millersville. You <laughs> talking oh, shit. Man. Thank God she made it up. Stop jam, you got out of Millersville. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but me being from Millersville it just made me think outside the box period with everything that I do because you know what they the saying and was like okay you got to get out the um your, your town to see further in life and be bigger than what you are because if you stay there you're gonna be boxed in so I was there period like, I stayed in my hometown for like two years before I actually moved to Atlanta so I was down there working my ass off to make sure that this fucking career that I'm chasing right now is going to work out. So I was down there in Minnesota just thinking outside the box. I was like, okay. Mm. I could talk about this, what's going on in my hometown on a day-to-day -day basis, and I could push it to a worldwide Level. What's going on in Millersville? All types of shit going on in Millersville. Like what? What? What's going on in Millersville? What? Hella shit going on Cocaine in Millersville. Cocaine being moved through there or something? What? Do they like have a Colombian? Okay, I'm gonna say this. History fact. History fact. Millersville was supposed to be the capital of Georgia. It wasn't supposed to be Atlanta. Well, it was supposed to be. It didn't make it. What's the next thing? <laughs> but imagine, <laughs> but next imagine thing? Jermaine. Hold on, hold on. What's the other two things about Millersville? No, no, but hold on. <laughs> but imagine Jermaine Dupree shouting out Millersville, Georgia. <laughs> It don't sound better than ATL. It don't sound like Atlanta. Don't. Shout out to Millersville. I'm going to put us on the map. What's like, the other two things? Don't try to get see. You try to get away. The other two things. Three. We, I don't want to say this. All right. Fuck. No, say it. There ain't nothing in Millersville. Okay, so. Get your weight up. Millersville used to have the number one um, mental crazy asylum in the in United States. That's what you going to choose. Keep going. <laughs> Mill Millersville sounds like a town where okay. a lot of. I got it. One more, one more. Millersville has the only Chipotle with a drive-thru. What are you talking about? <laughs> they got... Oh, yo! <laughs> she definitely think I'll yo, find the box. Millersville, she got, she got love for y'all. Hey, yo. well, in Georgia. I'm going to just say in Georgia. Millersville has the only Chipotle with a drive-thru. 
In Georgia? Yeah. Oh, I have never in my oh, life seen a Chipotle with a drop though. Yo, pat, 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 pat. Don't do that. Don't I'm gonna take over my city. And guess what? Hold on. Fourth fact. Pap Chanel from that motherfucker. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what you had to say the first thing. What are three facts about Southside Queens, nigga? Oh, 50's from there, <laughs> Nikki's from there, and I'm from there. All right. All right. All right there All we right. go. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give South you that. South Jamaica Queens. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> are you telling me what Pap? What, how do that? Um, pretty and paid. Pretty and paid. I wanted to create female unity because I feel like when us females work together, we can get a lot more done. Because, you know, they always trying to push us against each other. Why well, is why that? Can't, yo, yo, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Pat. Forget all this technical shit, right? Why y'all doing always it? always women always think that they got to work with, uh, with women? Why y'all can't throw some men in there? Why can't You see, I got pink on today. Pink nice. Pink color. We working together, nice. right? That's, That's nice. That's popping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we can come in here looking, 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 trying to look crazy, but why do women always think you have to work with women in order to get what you got to get. I don't necessarily think that's the issue. It's certain females out here that have PTSD from working with men. What, what kind that? of PTSD? Sounds like you some have... Biz, some, okay, as a businesswoman, some men do not know how to keep it business. Thank God for the people that I work so with. We that, keep it strictly business. No, no, no. Most of us. No, no, no. Let, so, Pat, like, damn. Pat, let me help so, you with something. If you don't want a man to view you in these ways, just become fat and become sloppy. Not, there are dudes that like fat girls. Stop yeah, it. It's like, very rare. Yeah, but, that, no, no, but your numbers like, will go down. Pat, 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 tell them there are dudes that no, like fat girls. No, I like, matter. come on. Like, so, it's missed so many times. Me me being a business woman, I'm dead ass keeping it strictly business. Of course. Like, yeah, send me the song. It's, yeah, send me the song. I get the damn song. It's a fucking love song to me. Oh, okay. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's great. I'm going to do it. Yeah, baby, what you think about it? So, what you think they're going to do? I mean, like, come on, like, relax, what dude. Think, what you think they're going to do? I feel like dudes... They're like, going to shoot their shot. Yeah. yeah, shoot your shot, but y'all niggas need to get a new upgrade, like the iPhone 14. Like, you know, <laughs> iPhone got more upgrades than niggas with how they throw their shot. Yo! Yep! Oh. Asshole! She, she, I, I can't say nothing. Upgrade! She not saying don't try, do it better. Do it. Like, you mad, like, to, look... Go outside. I, I went outside this year. Well, yeah, I don't like going outside like that. But I went outside this year. <laughs> and I'm walking. This dude's something. Where you going after this? Ask me what my name is. Do you know how far you were going? Like, if you ask a bitch what her name is instead of what she's doing after this? Because it shows that you're trying to get to know her first. And then whatever yeah, you're trying to do. say in Millersville? I said it everywhere. I don't say that. Nobody I could go, I could go somewhere. Go, we, can go, we can leave here tonight. What's your name, girl? Excuse me. What's your name? Yeah. We can Not leave this no motherfucker. Upgrade. We can leave this motherfucker right now. Somebody gonna say, "What you doing?" And you leave this convenience store. <laughs> you, 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 what's your name? Works. works. Upgraded. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? You like you having a lovely day? What's your name? I would love you to like get to know you more. Ma'am, too. No, darling. Darling. Yeah, she like. I mean, like. Darling. Like niggas yeah, just gonna be hollering at me like we in high school. Like, what you finna do after this? You like, like darling? It's, it's different. See. It works. Oh, shit. That's I know what I'm doing with this Is that shit. upgrade? Yeah. Darling? Yeah. Hey, what's up, shouty? Niggas even call bitches little shit now. Little, little shit. shit? Yeah, that's my little shit. That's my little shit. <laughs> I can get away with that. That's my little shit right there, V. That's my little shit. My little shit. I don't play by my little shit. That's In Miami? Oh, my God. For, my for years? It's, would you, where you going, bitch? You can get away with bitch. that. Yeah. As soon as I get home, I'm calling my wife down. I'm like, yo, come here, little shit. But no, you can't do that because you know what her name is. Yeah, her name is the, 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 the dog, 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 nigga. <laughs> she going to be like, what the fuck? Hell no. <laughs> yo, What's the craziest name a dude called you during like an intimate moment? It's just not. This. That's it? Yeah. That's iPhone 7. <laughs> That's iPhone 7. I'm fucking with you. That would be so fucking weird if you having an intimate section with a dude and he say, go on little shit. Go on my little shit. Like, oh, you going to enjoy it. You like it. Hell no. Be like, yo, what's up, little shit? Like, do you smoke weed? <laughs> Shut up. I used to. Oh? Used to. Yeah, what, like a just... baby or something? No, it's just, it's just pop a baby out. Like, do you sneak and pop a baby out? Because that's what these deep rappers do. They no. be sneaking. They be like, I just no, never. I would. Yeah, you never know when they have a baby until it's Mother's Day. When I go to pride to my check, I would like to think about what I'm gonna get from the mall instead of how many diapers I need to get and, and baby lotions. Baby lotions, okay, I got you. So, what makes you smile, Pap Chanel? Living. What you like to do? I like to laugh. I don't got this new obsession. I like going to comedy shows. Oh, uh, there you go, because we already know that you like that's to why laugh. I do, that's my new hobby, going to comedy shows. Did you see the Chris Rock special? Where? 
I mean, I'm gonna go check it out. Is it reset? Yeah, he was in Baltimore and he addressed the whole Will Smith slapping them. <laughs> <Would you, laughs> why I'm you sorry. laugh like that for? <laughs> It's just funny. I'm sorry. What's funny? It's just it's just the world. You just the world is evolving. Like when I was a kid, I would never think I'd look at TV and niggas just get just snap on stage. Yeah, that, I mean, that, like we thought it was fake. Yeah, we, when we was, I like, thought it was fake part, too. I, I was like, nah, son. I said, yo, look, he, nigga smacked him. He was like, damn, that shit fake. And then we saw that shit everywhere. We was like, this nigga walked on stage <laughs> and smacked this nigga on live TV. Like, right. I, I really was shocked by that shit too, and I was like, "Yo, things have definitely changed. changed. This, this this social media has set people free, yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm a the business. So shout out to them businessmen, them prospering men. Though. We're gonna talk. Y'all go crazy. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff. Yeah, you I look just, like you shoot guns. I just I just got a new hobby. I love I love I love comedy now, but I do I cook cooking. It's like it just speaks to me. Cooking, I look, I take. You can I, cook too, yeah. So you got shit on me. I ain't even got to look at your food. You can't fuck with me. Ever. You can't, no, no. Nigga, you can't fuck with me. No. Stop. You ain't old enough to fuck with me. I got more seasoning. They don't than do, AJ got nothing. Stop. Hey, Stop. AJ I got, got more shit more to do with it. Your I'm age. from Millersville. Do Down South cooking is better than up north. Oh, Millersville no, sounds like the women that have like the extra auntie fat on their arms, so she so might be nice. I'm bread whipping that shit. I can cook on the grill. Yeah. Do you like being signed to a label? More than you like being on your own, just doing your own thing, building your name on an independent route. Mm. I love being signed to a label because I have a team. I have a team. Everything has its has its perks and pros and cons to everything. But it's the fact that being signed to a label it gives me like extra ambition because I know like, I'm finna get on this Zoom call. It's gonna be ten people on this thing. We I'm finna figure out what we can do to get to the next level because it got to a point when I was independent. It was shit I could not control. Such as. Like, I was having my own manager when I first started. So, like, dude comes and, hey, what's your book? I'm like, what's up, bro? <laughs> like, <laughs> See you, bro. I'm like, what's up, man? Like, yeah. He said, hey, this pop. I was like, no. Nah. Do, 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 do. Like, no, nah, I couldn't do it no more. I was like, hell no. Nah. So, like, me, me and Santo Label, I love the team, and, you know, I, mean, I don't work with so bullshit. You got a lawyer, you know, like you got a lawyer, you know, manager, yeah. you got an accountant, because I know they advanced you a nice check. Yes, everything that I have signed in this on this earth was in my best interest. <laughs> Yo, I like how you talk. <laughs> what what do you miss about being independent? Is there anything you miss? Or you're like, um, no, this label life is everything. Well, everything just has to be strategic with a label. So the only thing that I miss is just like waking up and just dropping some shit when I when I feel like it. Mm, obligations. Like, yeah, if I felt like I want to drop it at two o'clock, I drop it at two or one. <laughs> so who taught you the game? Like, do you got business people around you that did, did, did somebody groom you along the way? Yeah, like um, when I first like started getting a buzz, I would drive back and forth to Atlanta in my hometown like every single day, three hours on a row, and. I learned a lot from T.I. Like, I was in the studio with him every single day, and like he would give me the best constructive criticism with my music. And I was like, this is a goal. Like, if somebody told me when I was six years old, I'm going to be in the studio with this man, and he's going to give me constructive criticism to have longevity in my career, I'd be like, shut up. What was some business tips or musical tips he was giving you that you weren't able to access or even know about? Like, that's, that stands today. Like, when it comes to, like, a lot of artists feel like everything has to be perfect right there and then. Mm -hmm. It's like the mo the times that you sit back and you perfect what you have going on and then you present it to the world, that's when the hard, like, time, hard work pays off. Nothing easy in life's going to come like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I learned to take my time with stuff. Like, when, when you have a certain type of hunger in your soul, you just be eager, like, okay. That shit hard. I, can, I know I could do it better, but I want to put it out there right now. No, you got to perfect that shit. He told me to perfect that shit. Go back in there. If you make a song, go back and fix this. Go fix that. Go fix this. Go fix that. And another thing, always keep your professionalism. When you're around people, first impressions mean every fucking thing. First impressions are, like, mean so much. They mean so much in the world now. How would you land in, in, inside the, the studio with Tip? Um, I was just outside. I was outside. My manager, he was putting me around different in different rooms and stuff. And he'll say, "Okay, this is Pap Chanel," and he'll just let me go. And I grew relationships off of my personality and stuff. Hmm. And I got really cool with his son, the money. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, was you freestyling inside these, these um, sessions, or you, you was bringing songs in? By what then, was your process I was for, for people to feel you and be like that you that you real deal. Um. What sparked the interest at first was I was 
doing freestyles at my mom's house then. And I was, um, I sampled the um, beat T Grizzly first day out. Mm -hmm. I released it on SoundCloud and Facebook first. And it had two million views in one week. So I was like, what the fuck? So, so many people were sharing it. And then after that, some months went by, I did um, a freestyle on Nicki Minaj, good form freestyle, um, her, her beat. And actually, Tiny posted it, because I made like this viral saying, if I want to, I will. If I want to, I will. Mm -hmm. So she posted it, and everybody was just like, what the fuck? And then when my manager put me in the room with those people, and they saw the personality and everything, just fell in place after that. Okay. It was just perfect. So it's the perfect storm of using social media, having good people around you, being outside. Because yeah. sometimes people rely heavily on social media or just rely heavily on relationships. I think we're in a space now you got to merge everything. Merge co everything. Collectively. You're into comedy, so have you been to T.I.'s comedy show? I have. <laughs> what do you think about it? It's funny. It's funny because he's Did seriously being himself. Like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Oh my God, he's dead ass serious. Like, <laughs> what co what comedian would you want to like be on one your next project if they could do a skit or host one song? You know what? I would seriously like go back in time mm -hmm. and get a Bernie Mac clip mm. and put it somewhere because he used to be talking shit. Yo, Bernie Mac was, was, Bernie. Me, it was the funniest and that right. out. <laughs> Bernie Mac was how you screaming and yelling. Laughing, yeah. your stomach. Right. Like, oh, you have me laughing about the LeBron James girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there, Pap. No. Just... When we off camera, we gonna tell you about his, uh -oh. his, his favorite rapper out. <laughs> okay. yeah, please, you know how that goes. <laughs> but what comedian you enjoy now? Like, do you, or do you have a list of comedians you want? Like, to... I'm gonna be so honest. Like, me just spursing out and just falling in love with something new. I have just been just oh, you, uh, taking, taking in, in slow... anything. And we live in a comedy world now. You see motherfuckers get paid on YouTube now to go fuck with people in the stores and stuff. Everybody you think that's like, comedy? But it's just funny because like... Ass, ass, ass work, you seen that video saying. with the Mano situation, so... <laughs> well, they said that was fake, so... That is so bold. Do you know how bold it is? It's just wake up and I'm going to Walmart just fuck with folks. <laughs> Gonna, it's just some, funny. Somebody going to catch a bad motherfucker around with them people inside the mall, though, because everybody ain't going to be dealing with playing them games and yeah. see that you got a camera on. Somebody's going to be like, I don't give a fuck about your camera. Remember that? Smash. You ever seen that one skit where they ran up on this dude and he was about to pull the hammer and he dropped the hammer? He's like, yo, bro, chill, chill, chill. It's a skit. He's like, oh, okay, okay. I seen dudes I'll be safe dudes, out here. choking them with two hands, lifting niggas up. Throwing niggas down steps because of this shit. They wildin' right now, yo. I ain't crazy with that. Who you, since you're old enough to vote now, who you voting for? Trump or Biden? Oh Biden. You want so you, you would vote, vote for Biden? Biden? I mean, that was my two options. I'm not voting, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm not I'm not gonna vote for Trump. I mean it's yeah. <laughs> but this business question. I just What? Trump or Biden? We we are in a recession and an inflation. Yes, this That's is true. a business question. Yeah, That's we're true. like, we're living in a pivotal time right now. The world is just changing before our eyes. Mm -hmm. It's like because changing before our eyes. Yo, to be really real with you, Ghost, that freaking political stuff affects the freaking music business. When that, when, when, um, when the stock market crashed years ago, we was in the music business thinking like, yo, everybody else is, is, is going to suffer because we never would suffer. Anything could go down. We never lost money. When that stock market crashed and people lost their cribs and all that, mm. and Napster was around, we was in the music business like, yo, dudes was killing themselves, B. All right? Mm. So, this, so the stuff that goes on with this world still affects the business that we're in because we got to bring that stuff home. She got a family. She got parents that's going to lose their jobs. It's going to need right. money. And that stuff trickles down on us big time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you signed a publishing deal yet? Because you, you write your rhymes, right? Yeah, I read my rhymes. You sound publishing deal yet? Yeah. yeah. I said I worked with? out a lot of stuff before yeah. I went major. I worked out a lot of stuff major, like like even the pretty and paper, and I own that. So okay. my publishing, I own all that. Like so, so do you know how I'm that actually works? Actually, for other people now. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, a, I'm actually <coughs> curious about this, and maybe you could tell me this. When you sign your publishing deal, when you not signed to a major already, right? Mm -hmm. Do they come and give you more money once you sign to the major? Because when you're, because you're not with a major, it's a different scale. Yeah. When you're with a major, your scale goes up. Right. Did they give you more money yeah, it's once like you a sign whole, with the it's, major? It's like a whole new pedestal. Like yeah. I already got a lot of shit worked out for myself. So like, if you if you like what I'm already presenting, it's just 
got to bring more to the brand now because I done put more and in, invested in myself more with that. What's your thought? Everything was just, um, everything's just been negotiating. You know, I'm negotiating you know, deals and they always in my best interest. Yeah, what's your thoughts on Nicki uh, potentially starting a record label? That's going to go crazy. Actually, Nicki signed my uh, producer that I've been working with since I've been 17 years old, Jay Reed. Every project I have released, he has produced two to three songs on each project. And he just got signed to her. Well, he's actually been signed, but she's just not presenting. I've been there she was going to drop a label, like come out with that. And mm. Jay Reed's been signed to it for like some months now. And shout out to him. Congratulations, Jay Reed. And I got some amazing songs with him. And I have some songs that's going to be released with him, on with him this year. So, so maybe Nicki will call Def Jam and be yep. like, yo, I want Pap Chanel on my label. And they'll change that paperwork around. And you should be on her record label I being at Jay Reed. Is it? That, that's very possible. That's very possible. I know something's going to happen with Nicki in the future. I know it is. Sounds like you have a song in the works with you and Nicki. I don't. You're lying. I don't. I have a song in the works with her producer, Jay Reed. Which leads Which is to, always. But you know what I'm saying? The door is always open. On, I'm a person. I know if I believe it, I can achieve it. So every song I make, Nicki Minaj can get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nicki. Jay Reed producing it. Yeah. Because we, we, we try to tell people that that's the way to go. Because we had Fresher on one time. And when Fresher was at his peak, he didn't reach out and work with producers. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. just stayed home. But when you out there, this producer could have a verse and have a relationship with somebody else that could change his life mm -hmm. right. and yours at the same time. Right. So so you need to have a thousand records with Jay Reed because if Nicki comes back and picks one record, it'll change your life just like that. Crazy. And me and Jay Reed, we have a lot in the bag. We have a lot of songs in the bag. We have one song that I'm so confident about and it's not even being released on my next project. It's probably going to get released this summer because my next project is coming out this month. Hit, 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 Yep. My first project with, with Jeff Daniels. This is an EP. What's mm -hmm. your single? Left, right. I just released I've that. I've seen that. Yeah, he, he, Last he, Friday. He it to me, but you know, we, we got to do the political so we can say it on camera for the people. Left, yeah. right. You know what I'm where, where your dog at? Because I always see you have your... I had to get my dog away. Oh, thank God. I'm allergic to dogs. You were allergic to their fur? I'm allergic to dander, fur, everything with the dog, gerbils, cats, everything. It was too much, like... Shizzles and he was a boy. Boys have attitudes, they ignorant and they stubborn. And when I first <laughs> What are you talking about? I did not think of, I did not think <laughs> Yeah, I know we was cool until she was dead with it. Like what you talking about right now? You're no, that's a real fact. Like all my dog lovers out there gonna know what I'm talking about. Boy dogs are bad. They're just now, bad. Now if you change it to boy dog. Boy dog. dogs. <laughs> but he was bad. Like when I first got him, I was just happy to have my own puppy. I was taking him on flights with me. I let him run around a hotel room. It was just crazy. So he got older and he got adjusted to that. Like when he was at the vulnerable stage, when I should have been teaching him not to be a crazy not ass. Not to be shitting everywhere, and pissing everywhere. He got adjusted that. to what a high end lifestyle. I want to say, he yeah, that. And, and, he and he didn't appreciate it. And he just did so everything. He was definitely a girl. Yeah, that's yeah, a girl a, dog. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a what, girl that's dog. That's what when you spoil Thank a woman, you, and you don't a break a man's soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She that sounds girl like a woman. Dog. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's why. Guess what you did? You don't like broke niggas, but you had a broke dog. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. I thought he went to the pet store, Banfield Hospital. That's on your dollar. That's expensive. I know. He was the shit. He's supposed to. You seen when that? My dog walked down the sidewalk. He walked with his head up, and he was listening to that pap shit in the car with me. Your dog was the shit. He was. He was a. He so was. Why you don't have he was, that was my little shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was like my dog. was on his paptivities. I, he met Cosmic Kevin and everything. Paptivities. Yeah. Hint, 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 hint. You got a lot of adjectives, <laughs> verbs, nouns, and phrases. That's what I'm saying. You can't get bored with me. That's what I'm saying. My mind goes crazy when it you comes to my career. You know how to be bored. Yeah. You lying. I do not be bored. Yo, bored. this is the first time I saw you just <laughs> lying right in front of the camera. <laughs> keep lying. Like, what are you I talking can, about? I know how to be bored. I'm one of those people, I feel like when it comes to high energy people, when mm. we be quiet, be the fuck quiet. Everybody gotta be quiet. Like I, I understand. Like that. you know, it's either on or off. It ain't no in the middle. Like yeah. Like, hey, you high? And I'm a cancer too. So you know what they say about us? Are you a July or a June? July. June is me. Okay.
Goon Castle, they don't kill. Really? Oh, they come with the gun. <laughs> they come with the gun. Sorry. Every cancer I've ever met Dude has been cool. Goon is the terror gun. Like, I've never had an issue with any cancer. We the champ. You, you don't have a let you tell her he don't have an issue with nobody. No, I know there's yeah, signs that are ridiculous. Does to nobody. He I do know nothing. Nobody doesn't Yo, like EP, him. Yo, do I bother people? Doesn't. He's so innocent. Uh, yes, He's so, so yeah. innocent. Yes. So that's that's a, that's a fact though. Okay, you say he don't bother people. They say what you put out in the earth is what you get back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so he don't bother people. People ain't gonna bother him. Okay, I got you. That's Pat. that's good karma Pat, coming back. Believe this nigga if you want to. Yeah, I don't lie. Right? He'll tell you. Pat, Sign then, up. Yeah. Only I, in the years we've known each other, I've only made one mistake around him, and he didn't talk to, to course, me for one year. A year and a half. Whoa. Yeah. A year and a half. Yeah. Exactly. But and anyway. ever since then, I've worked to make up for it. He can say, "Smooth sailing." Thank you. You know how hard it is to be on point for five years in a row. It ain't that hard. Pat. Well, I don't know. P A P. Why are you not on all, all, all these freestyle platforms? That I'm seeing everybody on. Everybody she did a few. TikTok. Huh? TikTok. No, I'm talking about the block works. You're on the radar. Oh, it's know, on the way. That stuff like that. Huh? It's on the way. Oh, right. like when I tell you I took a break last year, it wasn't necessarily a break because I was still working my ass it off. Sounds like a break to me. It wasn't a break. I was on. I was on the biggest platforms last year. Shout out to all the platforms, but I was on some big shit. Madden. Niggas was turning on Madden and my song was popping on. See, she's talking fly That's right now. Work. She's it's like, it's why it's would I go do these if I'm on P Valley and Madden? We this is a fly touch, talker. We finna touch all bases. I'm acting like I'm playing baseball right now. You throw me that ball, I'm gonna hit him for the touch. Every motherfucking base. And if he take me some time, it's gonna take me some time. Shout out to On the Radar, Cosmic Kev. Shout out to Bag. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we you know what I'm saying? Question though. What. We 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 talk business here. We talking business, yeah. How did you get on Madden and P Valley for these artists? Because especially you're so young to execute that. What was the process like to get on these things? Because like when I when I get my creative mindset on, mm. I don't always just make songs for just one specific reason, my mm. life and what I've been through. I make songs for any type of situation in life. I make when I go to the studio sometimes. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm thinking commercial today. Today I'm thinking pop. Today mm. I'm thinking, oh, I want to be Mariah Carey cousin today. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I just take it everywhere. So you get to that and process. And I have an amazing team. We just pitch it. We pitch it. We pitch it. I get under my own way of pitching it. I just get on live and I let my fans hear. They, they pick my whole damn track list. But do you know Got how some hard? Got Yeah. Let me ask you a real question. Mm. Do you know how hard it is to have the connections to pitch your records to think fees? Yeah, that's not something there's normal. There's not a lot of people that, like, we right. know the dude that does 50s thing, right? Um, and it's still hard to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They get a lot of music coming to them. They're very selective on who they use and the songs that they like. And it's very rare that they use people outside their, their network. So whoever your team is, to get these placements on these joints that, that's bringing you residuals, they're doing a great job. I'm mm -hmm. like yeah. Actually, P Valley 2, I had made the perfect song, Everything You Want. I was not even thinking about nothing. I was just having fun with that song. And they actually reached out and was like, hey, we want this song. How much they paid you for that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know what that price was. How much they paid you uh -huh. for that? She, she don't want to... <laughs> Did you get residuals for it, too? Did you get royalties, too? Oh, no. Every time to get paid? You can't Pap Chanel from that. Milledgeville. That shit dropping this month. Y'all be on the lookout left, right, just like, drop last Friday. You know I'll say this. <laughs> she getting so much right now, she gonna take us out to dinner. Hey, I ain't said, look, you see what I'm saying? Ain't no women coming Hey, up. you get what I'm saying, y'all? Y'all get what I'm saying? <laughs> if y'all if, if y'all can do it, us females can do it. <laughs> When's the last time you took a nigga out to eat as we close this I out? I take niggas out to eat. All the time? Not all the time. If, it, if it's... If, <laughs> if it's... <laughs> If it's granted, if it's granted, I'm going to take him out to eat. Yo, bro, she threw the arms up. Pretty and paid. Not all the time. Pap Chanel. <laughs> Pretty and paid. Pap Chanel. Yo. Left, right. My wife loves your name. I just want to tell you that because she never shout forgot. Shout out to wifey. Day she heard it. She loves your name, Pap Chanel. Appreciate it, Pap Yo, Chanel. Shout out to Dev Jam. Shout out to everybody that came in. Pap Chanel next up was good. Bang, wow. bang. It's on the way, baby. Mm. Pretty and paid. It's a pap world. If you hating, you just living in it. I think you're going to open up your own strip club. What? I'm open up a lot of shit, a lot of businesses. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> Not in Millersville. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, Millis Bell, we finna show them. I'm finna put the star. Like, when, when, when niggas go to school in four, five years from now, they gonna look at the map of the United States and they gonna see, they gonna see the two stars on Georgia. And you know why? Because Pepe Chanel from there and Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting Milledgeville on the map. Remember that, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because this is gonna be in my biopic. Milledgeville is gonna be on the map because of Pretty and Fame, Pap Chanel. Here. Bang, bang. Shout out to everybody with the Paptivities. I got some shit on the way this month. Turn your post notifications on. Left, right, out, right now on all DSPs. Shout out to my new bros. Y'all just, y'all made my day. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah.